In this video, we're going to look at a quick and easy way to find the vertical asymptotes for secant graphs from an equation. So what we're really going to do, it all boils down to applying the horizontal transformations to the vertical asymptotes of our parent graph, secant x. So as long as you know where those original asymptotes are, you can use this method with ease and it'll work every single time. So here's the general form for a secant equation. And the horizontal transformations are here in the box. These are the inputs of the secant function. So whatever is in there in the parentheses in that spot for the inputs, you're going to take those and set them equal to your vertical asymptotes of secant x. So that'll look like this. We know our secant asymptotes happen at pi over two plus pi k. So that's your basic setup. And then from there, all you need to do is solve for x. Now keep in mind that k is an integer. Our final equation will represent every single asymptote of our secant graph, and it will just generate different ones depending on which integer you substitute in for k. You can substitute in negative one, zero, one, and each will give you one of the asymptotes of your graph, while the equation will represent all of them. Okay, so let's look at an example to see how this works. Let's say we want to find the vertical asymptotes of this equation, y equals two secant of two x minus pi plus one. So we know our trick is to take the inputs of the secant function, so it's two x minus pi, and set those equal to our parent asymptotes of secant, which we know are pi over two plus pi k. And I like to remember the pi over two plus pi k as where cosine has its zeros or its x-intercepts. So if that helps you, that may um, make this even easier. Okay, so we have the inputs set equal to the parent asymptotes, and now all we need to do is solve for x. So let's first start by adding pi to both sides. So on the left side, you're simply left, simply left with two x. On the right side, we only combine pi over two plus pi, because those are the only like terms, the pi k is its own term and it stands by itself. Okay, so we'll say that equals three pi over two when we add pi over two and pi, and then we still have that plus pi k hanging out there. Okay, so now all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by two, and that'll isolate x. So let's do that, making sure we divide every term by two or multiplying by one half, if that helps you. All right, so we have x equals three pi over four, plus pi over two k. This is our asymptote generating equation. It'll give us all the vertical asymptotes for our above equation. So we'll look at the graph in a minute. Let's take a second and substitute in a couple different values for k. So I usually like to start out with k is zero. That's typically a really easy one to find. So when k is zero is substituted into our asymptote generating equation, we should have an asymptote for this graph at three pi over four. Okay, let's try when k is one. Okay, we can see, I'll just do a little bit of scratch work. We have x equals three pi over four, plus we know pi over two times one is just pi over two. Let's rewrite it so it has a common denominator as two pi over four. And so we know that the next asymptote moving to the right must happen at five pi over four. Okay, if you wanted to substitute in k equal negative one, we'll do a little more scratch work here. That's x equals three pi over four. This time it's pi over two times negative one, so we'll have a minus here. And let's rewrite that as two pi over four. So we should have another asymptote at pi over four. And of course you could do this forever, um, but hopefully this helps you see how our k, our integer, works with this asymptote generating equation. So let's take a minute to look at the graph and see, and we should be expecting to see these three asymptotes plus a few more, pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and you can see they happen every pi over two. Um, and that really goes back to that plus pi over two k. Okay, so now to look at the graph. Here's a sketch of this equation, and you can see that we have the asymptotes that we predicted when k was negative one, we got the asymptote at pi over four. When k was zero, we got the one at three pi over four. And when k is one, 
we got the one at 5 pi over 4. So you can see that as you plugged in different values for k, you'd get more and more of these asymptotes. As a reminder, here is our asymptote generating equation that we found. So give it a try, plug in a few more values for k and see that you get these other asymptotes. Um, I will be sure to post some links in the video description for the actual method for graphing secant graphs. So be sure to check those out and I'll probably post maybe one more um, that specifically focuses on finding these vertical asymptotes of secant graphs. Thanks for watching.